Hey everyone, thank y'all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update on Tuesday, October 29th. Um, I feel like hot and dry is probably going to be the theme for most of the updates today. We have uh, Trip is on the road, or not on the road, on the road, but just finished up a farm call and is on the phone. So we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Trip first. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all very much for having me for today's update. Um, yeah, the word is, is hot and dry, and that's pretty universal across the region and across the state. Uh, producers are right now trying to make the hard decision what to do as far as planting their winter annuals, wondering what they're going to do about the ryegrass and trying to look into that crystal ball. And what I've been telling people is that uh, I can't look into a crystal ball and tell you what the rain's going to do, and that is the the main force that we are uh, trying to plant around right now. Fortunately for our producers, we've got some pretty solid chances coming up in the next few days, but what's coming behind that is uh, yet to be seen. And I can tell y'all it's going to take quite a bit of rain to get us just to cold up. Um, I mean, dry, it's, it's dry, dry, even whenever you dig down or turn soil over. It's, it's dry pretty considerably uh, in our subsoil areas. So it's going to take quite a bit to recharge us to get us to where we can adequately grow crops. Uh, as harvest winds its way down in northeast Louisiana, a lot of cotton's come out. Uh, through all the Florida beans are done. Uh, some fall work's taking place. I uh, want to highlight something, guys. It's important to be working with a veterinarian and have a good herd health plan in place. There's been some problems uh, from a herd health standpoint. Raise its head. Uh, some coccidiosis issues across the region. Some anaplyas issues across the region. It's important to have a, a vet that you have a good working relationship with to help handle these things as they come up. Um, a vet that knows your herd, a vet that knows what's going on around the area to help make recommendations for you. Uh, another thing I wanted to comment on while I had a moment today is um, we had a great hay season. Pretty well everybody across the state, for the most part, had a, a great hay season. A lot of hay got put up, and thankfully we did because many producers across our region have started putting out hay uh, in, in sizable numbers uh, this week and even in tail end of last week. I know a few guys are trying to drag their feet to make it to uh, – first few days in November just out of pride trying to drag it out as long as they can but our pastures have, have turned off on us so we're going to be relying a lot on our stored forages moving forward. Uh, guys I know that's kind of quick on it but that is pretty well the update for the northeast region. Thank you. Um, now we'll turn it over to Lee who is working over at the state fair that's kicking off this week. Well, thank you, Ashley. Glad to be with you all here today. I'm having a little bit of computer issues um, today, so I'm having to join via phone. So we'll try to make the technology work and everything. Ditto what Tripp said as far as conditions. It's, uh, so I heard somebody allude to it the other day. It's almost like desert conditions uh, where, where you have these hot days followed by uh, cool nights and mornings that's pretty much the pattern in the wind my goodness the wind has been ever present it seems we're uh, burn bands litter the uh, northwest part of the state and uh, uh, we've really been blessed in fact that uh, fortunate and blessed that we haven't had you know, uh, really a dearth of wildfires um, because of the conditions that are present themselves and everything but Everything's burned up and dry. The, what's a little bit unique to northwest Louisiana and possibly in the Trips area as well, uh, we experienced a little bit of a frost in between the time that uh, that we talked uh, uh, in the last news update. I'm not going to say that it was a heavy frost. It, it wasn't much. It was a couple of days there where we experienced uh, some on the windshield and just a tad on the grass, and that wasn't all locations. But what it did is between um, it, is uh, it finished off whatever uh, grass we had still green, uh, semi-green in, in the pastures that warm season grass. And between it and the effects of this tremendous drought we're in uh, just uh, has done a number on these pastures as far as these warm season grasses go. Um, I don't really have an estimate as to how many people were uh, are feeding hay as of today, as of release of this news update. I started to try to pin a number on it, but I, I don't know that it would be accurate. But I do know that quite a few are having to feed hay. There's a lot of people that are jumping into winter supplementation on cows as well, uh, whether that be through 
uh, molasses tubs, protein tubs, or through rations. I know that there's some people that are kind of getting started on that as far as that goes. Biggest effect, as Tripp said, is uh, on the planet planting of the cool season forages and legumes. And I, I want to kind of offer just a little bit different twist on that. We know that the the, uh, the planting window's kind of passing by a little bit. We're, we're, we're still within the tolerance. And if we get this rain towards the end of this week that they're meteorologists are promising it definitely can salvage something out of it but what we give up is that early season grazing that so many producers rely on you know many producers will buy hay and and um, they'll buy hay with the plans of having enough ryegrass or you know ryegrass is a part of their forage plan and so they may have to buy additional hay supplies and it's a good thing like Tripp said that we do have as much hay as, as, as we do out there. But on the flip side of it, I did want to make mention, because I deal with a few handful of these folks, these producers, that their their business model, their farm business model, is based on planting winter forages, whether that be wheat, ryegrass, cereal, rye, oats, any combination of that, and grazing stocker cattle, you know, lightweight, recently weaned cattle, uh, through the winter into the spring and on out and, and sell them. And I deal with some fairly big operators that that's their whole business model. They're not in cow calf business. And for them, this isn't just an inconvenience or buy a little more hay. This is, uh, this is crunch time. This is uh, definitely a, a big worry to them. So just kind of a different perspective on there. I know Louisiana is mostly a cow calf state and Northwest region follows suit as far as that goes. We're mostly cow calf. But there are those around that uh, that do have um, uh, uh, where winter forages plays a more integral role into their operations. That being said, uh, had, we've had a couple of, of um, pretty good weeks as far as the cattle markets go. Markets mostly steady. I've got an abbreviated market report this week. I'm, I was stated whenever I started rambling. We, I'm having a bit of a computer problem with Wi-Fi problems and such. So I've got a uh, I've got the market report, but I don't have percent changes. I wasn't able to access the data to be able to get that for you guys uh, for today. So y'all are going to have to forgive me on that. But jumping right into it, um, for the past two weeks since the last market report, 500 to 600 pound steers average of the prices was two dollars and five cents per pound to two dollars and fifty six cents per pound. Five to six weight heifers, a dollar ninety four to two forty a pound. Uh, Coal cows, a dollar two to a dollar twenty nine. Uh, Coal bulls, a dollar twenty eight to a dollar sixty one. Average of the high prices paid for bred cows was twenty four hundred forty one dollars and sixty seven cents. Average of the high prices paid for uh, pairs was twenty six hundred dollars, twenty six hundred sixty six dollars and sixty cents. And so I mentioned this in a past market uh, uh, news update that as far as where the deals are. Folks, I'm still seeing what I consider to be deals on some pair cattle. Uh, your experience may vary at your local livestock auction market, but if you're sitting on an abundance of hay or by some miracle have some, still have some green grass or uh, look like you're going to have some extra rye grass, you might consider these pair cattle right now, folks. Uh, compared to the bread cattle, they seem like the, just on paper the better deal. Had a very productive bull sale uh, a couple of weeks back there at uh, Dixie Farms. Angus uh, had, had their production sale there, Angus bull sale in Armistead. Uh, really great report from our friends there as far as the quality and prices as well. Uh, making mention that the Branch Ranch will be having their production sale on Brangus and Ultra Black Bulls coming up on Monday, November the 4th. So I know everybody's kind of actually waiting that really good local uh, producer there with some high quality bulls. If You can check that out if you're interested. And so with that, I believe I've covered everything and I'll turn it back over to you, Ash. Thank you. Uh, Brittany, we'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so just for an update on our area, so kind of similar to what, what Tripp and Lee said, um, we, we have that dry weather, of course, and over here as well in the central part of the state um, and have people kind of questioning, you know, you know, should I plant the ryegrass? Should I not? Is it too late? Um, I had a producer this morning that I met with to go and do a hay sample and, and he asked me that too. Um, and it's like, you know, it's a little bit past 
you know, that window that we would like to see it planted. Um, but, you know, with that rain that's forecasted for the end of the week, you know, it's it's looking like like it'll happen. And sure enough, when I was leaving, I, I saw a truck pulling a, a cart from a green point coming down the road. So I'm sure it looks like that's probably what they were getting ready to do there as well. Um, so even if that grazing will start a little bit later than what we would like to see, um, it looks like should be able to get some uh, in the ground here soon. Um, also have, you know, still have people reaching out that are wanting to do hay, um, hay samples as well as soil samples this time of year. Um, it's a good time of year, especially to do hay samples, just so you can know what you have and what you'll need to supplement uh, for the winter in terms of your protein and energy needs um, of your cattle. And also for soil samples, I've got people that are looking to soil sample. Um, and I do try to remind people when they are looking to soil sample that they, for a soil sample, they can test for up to three crops. So you don't have to just test that soil for ryegrass. You can test it for you know, your warm season grasses as well. Um, and so you'll have that time, you know, if you do need to, you know, add lime to the soil to get that incorporated in um, to, you know, adjust that pH level. Um, so it's good to get those things done early and not right before uh, you're going to plant, uh, plant those um, grasses and whatnot there. Um, last Thursday here in Opelousas, we did have a breeding soundness exam um, with myself and uh, Lainey Richard, the livestock agent over in Lafayette Parish. We had uh, Dr. Grant Fontenot perform those for us. Um, I believe we had seven producers come through on Thursday with about 22 bulls. And I know on Friday I was not there, but they they did some more, I believe, for two producers on Friday as well. Um, so we had a good participation in that. Um, something that that Dr. Grant did say that he noticed, um, we saw a lot better numbers this year in terms of both um, mortality and uh, morphology there. So we're seeing some better better quality, you know, more bulls that are passing those tests. Whereas last year we saw a lot more bulls that either failed for various reasons or were just deferred to, to test again. I believe on Thursday while we were there, we had, you know, two that he would say he would call it either a fail um, or just defer and, and test again, maybe in, in the springtime. Um, so we just want to thank everybody that participated in that with us. Um, I did also just survey the producers that were there to see, you know, had they participated in an event like this before, would they be willing to do it again? And then I just kind of wanted to get an idea of what they were doing for um, just their, their, you know, breeding seasons, calving seasons. Did they have one? Did they have two? Did they just do year round? And something that I thought was interesting that a lot of people gave me the answer was, well, normally I like to do one, but just with, you know, the, the heat and the drought and everything and just you know, breeding just not working that well. They they didn't want to go a whole year without a calf crop. So last year they kind of got a little off track where they were kind of calving at, at different times throughout the year. Um, but it sounded like for the most part, people were um, looking at doing, or the people that I spoke to at least looked like they were trying to do just one calving season, whether that was fall or spring. Um, and of course, you know, the, the bulls and the heat we had last year and everything, um, we just saw some calving uh, rates, pregnancy rates just go down a little bit. Um, so hopefully we'll get back on track there. Um, but um, but that's all I have for my update here and I'll go ahead and turn it over to Vince now. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Ashley. And yeah, I mean, the sentiments are the same, you know, Brittany and I are, are in close proximity, but you know, I, I, uh, shoot, Lee and myself, you have cattle and, Everybody else in here is involved with cattle to some degree. And when the sun's setting here the last few days, it looks like the old trail, the coming cows are coming to drink, dust going straight up into the air. So um, I'm looking at the drought monitor map right now. And when you start to see a, a severe drought uh, in Cameron, Calcasieu, Jeff Davis, Evangeline, into Acadia, uh, that's the Gulf Coast of Louisiana. And we have not had the rains that we typically have, you know, in September, August, September. Uh, God forbid we'd had a hurricane, uh, but a tropical storm might have, might have given us some relief. Uh, it, it's pretty bad, folks. Uh, we got a lot of a lot of folks in ryegrass. There's a story here with with you know Trip and and Lee and, and Brittany, uh, but we've had a lot of folks just went ahead and put it out on dry ground. Um, some prepared seed beds, some not. Uh, just anticipating that we'll get into a more 
a typical fall pattern with some pass some frontal passage and some rainfall uh, and hopefully that comes to light on Thursday uh, where we see some mixed forecast uh, one one station's given 30 percent and I've looked at the weather channel weather underground uh, other local channels are giving up to 100 percent so uh, I don't know who to believe but uh, it, it looks pretty evident that we're going to get some type of rain, uh, some type of precipitation on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And as we look into the 10, 10 to 14 day forecast, there are some other days of, of slight chances of rain and cooler weather. So that'll be a saving grace in itself. Uh, on Saturday and Sunday, we, we hit near 90 degrees uh, for the last days of October. That's, that's, that's unprecedented for, for the end of October. Uh, it seems like we should have some cool weather. Uh, fall calving period is upon us, um, and uh, Lee mentioned this in, in two weeks ago when we talked about uh, you know some some calf hood diseases, possibly respiratory issues. Uh, that's tough on those baby calves being born. So um, I, I know I had a cow off by herself yesterday morning. Came back from church yesterday morning, walked out there to see, and her calf was a week old but dead. So uh, you know things happen, and if you're not watching after them. Uh, under drought stress and, and the stresses we're under right now, we have a terrible mosquito problem right now for whatever reason. But we are in the rice country. Uh, we have a lot of crawfish lakes being flooded right now. So uh, that could be a result of that. Um, but none, none to my general area uh, for, you know, for three quarters to a mile or so. And it's like, you, you better get in the house at, at the, when the sun's going out because they, they're going to overcome you. Uh, been having to put the dogs out of their kennel in, in up at night. Um, it's terrible. Uh, so we, we definitely need a season change, better weather. Uh, bulls, uh, I'll say this time and time again, uh, have your bulls up close. Uh, flies are bad right now still uh, because of the warm temperatures, the droughty conditions. It uh, just seems like when we have these type of conditions, insect issues or parasites and insects are, are, are bad. Uh, Lee mentioned uh, two weeks ago about you know, respiratory disease and, and replacement females or stalker calves. A set of heifers in the pen right now. One of them's coughing, but she's she's so awfully bad. I'm not going to pen her up to do anything with her. She's going to have to either get over it or you know and get along. But uh, I, I don't. You know, it's it's just a bad situation uh, moving into what we consider our late uh, late fall or mid fall into early winter, and uh, we we need some rain. Uh, people are questioning. Well, you know, I said we live in the rice country. We have a few people that went as far as cranking some deep wells to to flush some ryegrass in to make it come up. I know of two of my neighbors that did that this past week, and it's starting to come on up. But my God, how much does that cost a day and per acre to, to get that going? You know, uh, when you're talking about uh, these electric wells that that cost astronomical amounts of money to run them uh, to graze cows after, you know, so uh, just just a bad situation. And uh, thank God the market's uh, holding on. And Lee said it was steady to steady to good. You know, and local local markets at Kinder and Opelousas. Uh, we'll concur with that. You know, the markets have been good, uh, but it's going to soon start souring if we don't start to get some forages growing uh, where cattle are grazed and uh, some of our river bottom grounds where, where people typically just graze cattle. Uh, so it's 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 getting becoming serious. And um, any one of you listening can go look at the drought monitor map and all across Texas. It's, you know, they got some extreme drought in uh, probably the, the, you know, the central south central part of Texas. And uh, most of it's in a moderate drought. But uh, for, for southwest Louisiana to be in a uh, severe drought, that's pretty bad going into November. So that's all I have right now. Um, just uh, Lee mentioned again, they had a frost, uh, what, two weeks ago, was I think on the 16th or 17th. Uh, and, and I saw that that morning early at daybreak, we had frost on the ground. And it's pretty much decimated any form season grasses that we have left. And it's, uh, you know, along with the drought stress of the ground, um, there, there's just virtually no warm season grasses. And, and producers are starting to put some hay out and we're starting to see a lot of trailers roll around, roll around with 18 wheelers and and uh you know low boy trailers being pulled by pickup trucks uh moving hay around so that abundance of hay that was put up you know that they were that they were not going to get to move earlier this summer uh i think they may, may have an opportunity to do so um uh, just just because of the, the weather situation so that's all i have at this point uh hopefully we we see a relief from the rain that they're predicting on wednesday thursday friday uh, and get cooler temperatures because it's definitely, definitely in order. Thank you. And you actually lead text me while you were talking right before you said it. said, make sure I mentioned respiratory disease. Um, and he was making the note of it more so in um, 
weaned lightweight calves, but I mean, as Vince mentioned, it's it's all of them, um, those fall born calves and really everything. We were weighing heifers this morning for um, for the hill farm and for our go beef program, and there were a few of them that had to be doctored that were um, still kind of snotty. So do be watching that uh, on your entire herd, um, and don't just pick and choose. Take the time to look through those because, as Vince mentioned, um, you can have death falls pretty quickly from some of those respiratory diseases. So. I think that that's it. I want to wish all the exhibitors that are coming to see us at State Fair good luck. Um, I know there's been a lot of parish fairs throughout the state, um, but all of us on here are headed to Shreveport soon. So um, stop by and say hi, and we will see you all there. Hopefully we get this rain that's coming through. Um, I hope we I hope I make it into the barn in Shreveport, and then it pours down. But uh, hopefully we have some of that rain that's going to come on Thursday. So we'll see you all again in just a couple of weeks.